Mo, I'm going to do something with you right now. Yeah. Why don't I be Mo and you be your client? Sure. Okay. And we're going to talk about a video and I'm going to try to approach this the same way. And you're trying to find out a little bit more information from the client. Now, let me set the stage. Mo's a client. He, he's, a, he's running a multi-million dollar business. He needs video. Now, what I'm doing is I'm just trying to find out why you want to do something. Because ultimately, I care about you and your business. And I do not want to take money for services that I do not genuinely believe will help you. Everybody needs to understand that I'm not trying to do this to draw more money from you or because I read some theory in a book and I want to just try it. I'm really just sitting here thinking, how can I serve the person who's in front of me the best? And I know that you have three options. Option number one is to hire me. Option number two is to hire someone else. And option number three is not to do anything at all. Straight up. We need to just remember that. There are three options. That's what I'm thinking about. That's my mindset going in. Okay, so we're going to jump into the role play. Okay, so we're talking about a video project and I want to dig a little deeper because I just want to know what's going on, right? So let's just take it to the point in which I try to ask them like the bigger question and, and Mo, just begin by pushing back a little bit. Okay, Chris... Honestly, that just seems like a lot to even process right now. We just saw some of the cool things that you posted on your YouTube for previous clients. And we want something like that to just show off our company story and our people. And yeah, that's it, man. I don't, I don't feel like it's anything more than that. Okay. I totally respect where you're coming from. And I don't mean to aggravate you or to create unnecessary headaches for you right now. My main mission here is to make your life easier. And if I'm doing that, I apologize. Let me rephrase the question. Here's the deal. I do a lot of videos and I'd be happy to take your money to make this video for you. But I find out in some instances, my clients are not best served by having a video at all. And they just heard from someone like they need to make a video and they make one and they pay this money and then I deliver it and it doesn't achieve the results that you want. And that would probably be a, a not a good use of your money, don't you think? I appreciate and respect what you're saying, but I just want something nice that we can put on our social media to share so other companies in our field can see that we're, you know, active and present. It's it's not that serious. Okay. It's not a serious video? No, sorry. Let me like serious as in like it's not that big of a deal with like crazy amounts of results or I just need something that looks good. And I saw that you created good looking stuff and I'd like for you to just come in and shoot a video. So is this just a vanity video? Uh, I wouldn't say all vanity since we're going to post it publicly. We do hope to get some eyes on it just okay. to kind of share our story and our company culture. Okay. So if it were just done cheaply and it w is that, really what would serve you best? Well, we definitely need it to be quality. And you, the word cheaply just already makes me a little nervous because you you came recommended by somebody who I trust and I've seen your work and I like the quality. Okay. So I'm, I'm just hearing a couple of mixed signals here, if you don't mind. It's like not a big deal. Don't make it a big thing. It's just so other people can see it. But you don't want it done cheaply so you care about quality. So you're going to spend some money making this video? Yeah. if I mean, a, a decent amount of money for and to have the production quality look good and not look like somebody just came in here with a camera and a tripod and started waving it around, you know? Okay. Yeah, I think we got off on the wrong foot. Really, what I really wanted to just ask you was, uh, what was the motivation behind you making this video? Because sometimes... I can recommend something else that would be cheaper or more effective or even higher quality depending on what's really driving this. What I've heard so far is it matters to you, to the people who are looking at this, that you seem to be a credible company. Yeah, and that that's a really good question. And you're making me think here because there's there's these other companies in our space that are really active on social and they have all of this cool looking content and we really want to start this is kind of the entry phase for us to dip our toe into the water of having an online presence. And I know you do that. And the person who recommended you said that that's your specialty. So the motivation is to get people to know that we exist. And like I said, our story, why we started and the kind of culture that we run here. Okay. I'm glad now we're having this kind of conversation and you're kind of opening it up to this. Here's why I asked you this question. 
if it matters to you to be perceived as being active on social and having a presence, I'm just curious if you think one video is the way to go or is it a campaign, maybe three to five videos that get produced over the course of some time. And the reason why I ask that question is when you design something as a one-off, you're not necessarily thinking how they connect into the larger narrative thread. Does that, does that make sense to you? It does. And to me, you're the expert in this space. So it sounds like we're now having a dialogue on what this could look like for what I'm trying to accomplish. I was thinking one video, see what that does, see how we work together. And if there's opportunity for more, then there's opportunity for more. So can I you see. tell me a little bit more about what you're saying or what you're telling me we should do? Yeah, not, not just yet, but it sounds to me like you're fairly light on the commitment here that you do one. If it works, then you will do more. If it doesn't work, then you will stop doing it. Is that right? What kind of commitment does something like this require? I feel like I'm all in on the one video. Yeah. So... But you did say something like if it, I just wanted to confirm, like if it works, then you, you would do more. And if it doesn't work, you won't do more. Can uh, we just agree to that? Yeah. Sure. Like it has to work, yeah. right? Yeah, it has to work. Okay. Sure. So how will you know it works? I mean, how do videos that are posted on social usually work? Well, everybody has different ideas of success. I don't want to assume I know what you are looking at it and how you'll measure is it just like, man, that looks like a dope video to you? Or is it like, you know what? My cousin Vinny called me up and said, that's a, that's a really cool video. Or it actually, you, you had a new client call you and say, hey, I saw your video on Facebook. That was really cool. And I, I, want, I want to know more about your products and services. Like, what does success look like to you? It's kind of a hybrid of the latter, not necessarily calling us up for our product and services, but the more so the competition in our space recognizing that we're active so definitely something along the lines of it being shared and i think that's why i need it to be quality because i don't think average work is going to get shared and it also is a testament that we're willing to put in for something that's high quality so i see yeah i'd love my cousin Vinny to share it but i'd also love bob from company x who's our direct competition to be like whoa what are they doing i see you want to make your competition jealous. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, that's you want to embarrass point. your competition. Is that what you're saying? I just want to let them know that we're out here. Okay. Know? Now, do you, does your competition routinely call you up and say, whoa, what do you, whoa, that was cool. Like, how would you even know that? Well, I'm very active on LinkedIn. I mean, they would actively comment on your video and you'd be able to understand that they're feeling, because most people don't express that publicly. Oh, no, we're a, we're, we're a tight field. We're, I we're see like community. So yeah, it's like would. a friendly competition. Oh yeah. So they let you know like, man, you guys just killed it on that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that would mean something to you emotionally to kind of one up them. Yeah. And to be honest, here's why it's because the fr <laughs> they're really good at their social media game and it's oh. to bug me. Okay. What makes them so good? I just constantly see stuff, pictures of their employees, pictures of their uh, uh, customers. They dropped a video not too long ago. And to be honest, everyone in the C-suite kept sending it my way and I'm tired of seeing it. And I feel like it's probably the time for us to jump in there and create something. And that's why I'm here talking to you. I see. So we've uncovered a couple of things. You're just in dialogue here. I'm glad... Uh, Am I annoying you right now, by the way? You okay? No, you're, it's it's just funny because me and my partner were just talking about their video yesterday and it's funny that you got me to this point. I, I, didn't, I didn't think we'd get here. Okay, so here's two things that may not be related to each other that you've said that I just want to get your input on. One is you said high quality video and something that gets shared a lot. I don't know if you know this, but actually on social media, the quality of the video sometimes lets people know it's a high production and therefore manufactured and doesn't get shared as much. If you were just to scrub through in the timeline in your mind as to the last few videos you shared, chances are it looked real because it was real and production quality actually fights against it going viral. Mm. Okay, so hold that thought for a second. I want, I want to get your input. The second part that you thing that you said was initially you and I were talking, 
You're like, I just want to do one video, man. And I hear you. I'm not trying to sell you anything. But when you say it's this constant barrage, my word's not yours, this consistent, persistent, just jamming in your face, in the feed, you know what I'm saying? You're saying that and that's killing you right now. That's why I asked you, do you want to think of this in a campaign? Forget about cost for right now. I'm not even telling you I'm the right person to do this, but I just want to do right by you and figure out the real solution. Because like I said before, I would not want to take your money to do something that doesn't get the result that you want. A, the video doesn't get shared, and B, it's one video, one and done, and it doesn't do a dent to your friendly competition with your rivals. You have a point. Um, so it sounds like we might agree on something here? Yeah, I just, to be honest, I I don't know enough to to enter into that dialogue comfortably. So maybe I need your help here. You're thinking that our competition probably has somebody churning this stuff out regularly and that's what you mean by a campaign? Yeah, just think about it. Like there has to be a plan on how to release content over a consistent period of time. There's a number of strategies that we can use to maximize the amount of work we're putting into this in terms of the results and not trying to spend too much money on your behalf. So for example, here's just one example we're just talking about here. An idea could be just to shoot a video, but plan for like 30 second cut downs from that one video. So we'd shoot and plan our, our day differently with you so that we have these little tasty bite-sized pieces that we can pull apart. So this is how you, you stretch like a loaf of bread. Mm. We take something, instead of eating one giant loaf, we cut into like 14 slices. So we can serve it as whole and we can break it apart and there's lots of different things we can do. Are you understanding what I'm saying now? I am. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so now that we're kind of engaging in this kind of idea that it might want to be something more than that, let's get into numbers, okay? Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to stop here. And we're going to end the scene, okay? So what I want to do is to have some conversation with you in terms of like your observation in the differences between how you might have approached this in the past, as well as your observations as a prospective client. Yeah, so the first thing off the top of my head is the graceful tenacity. You were committed to asking your questions, you were committed to keep going, but I didn't feel forced. And one way that you did that was you, you labeled the emotion, am I annoying you right now? Which put me in at ease like, okay, he's realizing that He's just doing his due diligence. He means no harm. So I really appreciated that. Comparing it to me, I think when I was doing it, if we're being very frank, I was probably in it to try to get the biggest sale and not in it to care. As I now, after this was multiple years ago, but now I know better. And just the consistent ensuring that I understood what you were saying. So you'd say, do you, un do you understand what I'm saying now? Are we on the same page? And letting me know, I'm glad that we're now entering into a dialogue. Can And you're asking almost for my permission to transition deeper. Like, is it okay for us to, to go into X, Y, and Z? So you're almost letting me drive, even though you're driving. So those were the big ones that I picked up. Okay. And, I, and, and honestly, that was probably as real as it happened with me. What do you mean? Like me being the client, that was as real as the things that he said to me. Yeah. Yeah, I felt that you were pulling from reality there a couple of spots. <laughs> yeah. Maybe an amalgamation of a couple of different client conversations, but I felt yeah. pretty real about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so some things just to think about here is let's not get fancy language. I don't. Um, we're going to just talk human here, okay? Forget about all these terms. All I'm doing is checking in with you as I go to make sure you're still here with me. Yep. yep. Constantly I'm doing that. And the next thing I'm trying to do is I'm really trying to surface the things that are driving you to want to do this thing in the first place. I'm also trying to let you know I'm on your side. I don't want to waste your money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If this is bothering you, I'll end this and I'll walk away. And I'm keeping in mind that, you know what? I may still not be the right person to do this job for you. I just yeah. need to know what's going on. And in short order, I think I was able to demonstrate you to you that your initial feelings about this might have been completely wrong, but I didn't do this in a way that was calling you out. The worst thing that you can do is to confront somebody about their 
thinking even though you know it's wrong. Because when you do so, people tend to dig in and hold that position even though they know in their heart they're wrong. So I had to be very gentle in how I talk about it and use nonviolent communication with you, not to use words that are judging so that you can, of your own free will, step forward with me so that we can travel together. So I said, I heard some things that are sounding like they might be conflicting. Let me bring them up to you and then get your input on that. I don't need you to admit to me that you're wrong. I'm not trying to prove to you that I'm superior intellect or more experience than you. But I just want you to start to entertain the idea that I recognize something that you might not be right, but I don't need you to like admit it to me. I'm, I'm just opening that door for you to object if you disagree. Mm-hmm. And by like your, your complicity by not disagreeing allows me to move forward. Yeah. It's kind of like an admission without saying anything. Yeah, and I, and I wish you had. I wish you would just replay a different instance. It was more early in the conversation, where it was an, another way of saying that. Where you were like, "Well, you, you just want it to be quality." I can't recall exactly, but I felt also like you were gaining my permission to admit without actually admitting that something is not in yes. sync here with my logic. Yeah. Yes. What I said for you to scrub back in the timeline in your mind and think about the last few videos that you saw that were shared and was it the quality of the video, the production value that drove it or something else. Mm-hmm. And I wanted you to be aware of something as an expert practitioner. I do know this. When, when videos are too slick, people think that it's not real and it's manipulated. Hence why people try to make videos look as real as possible. So the goals are diametrically opposed. Like if you want to flaunt to your neighbors and your competitors and high quality production is what matters to you, I'll go that route. But if the shareability and it, its ability to move the needle for your business is more important, we'll go that route or we can find some hybrid version. Right. I also knew that there was some resistance because you it smelled like you smelled like a trap coming and you were reluctant to admit to a campaign. Now you're not going to admit it, it, but that I felt it. Mm-hmm. That's why I, I said to you, I, we could do this creatively without necessarily increasing the money. Of course, I'm going to charge you more, by the way, but I don't want you to feel that that's the goal. Yeah. Like, And I tried to come up with an analogy that makes sense to you because I don't want to speak video language. I said, think of a loaf of bread. Instead of eating the whole loaf, we can cut that into 12 slices. Mm-hmm. And then hopefully visually, you can see that in your hand like, oh, I get it. It's still a loaf of bread, but there's many ways to serve this thing. If, if I may, in reflection of, because I have this sales meeting in my mind right now replaying, the biggest mistake that I made is that I was flexing and that I know, and they gave me so much grace because we're still friends to this day. They were one of my first clients. If they weren't so much, if they weren't more seasoned than me, they were like, what are you doing, dude? So I definitely made them feel stupid. And if they weren't as graceful as they were with me, it was my ego showing like, I just learned this. Y'all know nothing about this kind of stuff that I do. Like, what's up? It wasn't that harsh, but it wasn't as graceful. Right. Though. It was that sentiment though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the thing that everybody needs to, to kind of just uh, to, to reflect on just for a minute here is that you're going to hear techniques and frameworks and even templates or scripts that you could use but I would suggest that you get rid of all those things for now. Because what happens is you're, you're so married to the script and the template that you think this is what's going to save you. And I'm going to tell you it's the principles underneath the, the templates and the frameworks and the scripts that really are what's important for you to learn. And the first rule is just to care about the human being that's in front of you, whether it be in person or the phone. And for you just to make sure that you're holding their best interests at heart. I say this, everybody nods, everybody agrees, but actually very few people do this. If we were to bring up some people to role play with us, you'll see right away, they're trying to sell something. They want you to buy that timeshare. And so therefore their questions aren't open enough, they're not generous, and they're really driving at something and clients are much smarter than you think. And you're not that good of a salesperson to do that. That's the bottom line. Drigo, let's bring on some people. I'd like to dissect and break this thing apart a little bit in case some people have some questions. There's somebody on uh, Twitter. What's up, Jerry Wang? 
Um, he said the role play, it was a long diagnosis and prescription. However, it feels like a bit of opposition with the previous proclamation. We will address issues of money early. Can you maybe elaborate, Chris, as to why you chose to go down the path you did? I think it was because of the setup of the role play, but can you maybe talk a little bit to that um, tweet? Yeah. Okay. What I was trying to do in this role play was to solve a very simple problem that Mo had asked about. We've done many conversations before about how to talk about money. So I think going back to the money conversation was not going to unearth new material. And I even set it up like in this conversation, I wanted there to be bad blood just on the jump. I said, Mo, I've said something. You're feeling like, hey, shut up, dummy. Just do the work. And so normally I wouldn't even be in that position because I wouldn't let it get there. So I was trying to show you how to do like a fumble recovery from a thing and to show you how to diagnose and to understand and unearth the deeper motivations in an organic way in conversation form with no template. So in a case like this, in the famous words of Bruce Lee, you got to just be water and take the form of the conversation. So when Mo pushes, the water retracts. It just goes where it needs to go in the conversation. Now, Jerry, here's the one problem I want you all to just realize. These are theoretical ideas laid out in an academic sense. But as you may find out later, this is the joke we have, monkey robot brain, is you hear the template and you think it must work and you just follow it. You follow it blindly without getting permission and your tone and your delivery is wrong and the client's having a bad day. But what do you do? You're like the terminated. You keep marching forward and you're going to march yourself right out of the sale. So I've learned all these things. I've incorporated them into my language. I recognize the moves. It's kind of like, um, you know, the Queen's Gambit. You've learned all the different moves and how you can end the game. Now that you know that, you just got to play chess. You're not going to whip open the book and say, well, you know, pawn to whatever it is on the board. And it's like, well, what's the counter move to? Let me flip to page 44. And you'll see people do this when they're in the role play with us. You'll see them try to adhere to the template and the framework and they will crash so hard. Okay, Jerry, 